There was a woman named Claretta or uh, Clara. Uh, Pitachi was her last name. She was not his, uh, his wife. Uh, he had been married a couple of times. Uh, she was his mistress, his girlfriend. And he was El Duce, the leader, the fascist leader of Italy. He was Mussolini, and he was trying to escape Milan. Uh, this, uh, you know, he had a 1939 Alfa Romeo sports car. Can you imagine how beautiful that sports car was? He had given it to Clara as a gift. And uh, this was April, uh, I think I was around two years old, almost two years old. This was 1945. And uh, there I was over there in Trussler, on Trussler Street in Oakland City, Indiana, a little two-year-old walking around, waiting for my dad to come home, sticking my little finger, my little finger up as I would hide behind the couch, thinking that he would believe that I was a, a rabbit, uh, into these little childish things. But what was going on with Mussolini was not a little childish thing because he was beginning to be aware that the wrath of the people of Italy was against him, that he had gotten them into this World War II, that he had made this a wicked deal with the Nazis and with Hitler. And all their young men and all their, their uh, bombed out cities and all, all of their trouble uh, and all, all of the widows and all of the uh, little uh, boys that had uh, gone off to war and gotten killed. That was all on him. And they were furious at him. And he was beginning to feel the wrath, the terrible wrath that was coming after him. So he joined a convoy of German soldiers and uh, he put on a uh, Luftwaffe helmet and a big uh, overcoat like they wore. And he tried to disguise himself as a German uh, to, to get to Switzerland with this convoy leaving Milan, uh, headed north towards Switzerland. And, and he was running. He was running and see, let me tell you something. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Uh, Romans 1.18, in order for you to get saved, and we have all kinds of people, oh, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. They are not saved because the wrath of God has not been revealed to them. It was beginning to be revealed to El Duce. And uh, he was running from the wrath of his own people, which caught up with him which caught up with him and his mistress, April 28, 1945, uh, when he was um, spotted. Uh, actually, the, um, the Italians, the partisans, were stopping all the convoy uh, cars. And they were saying, okay, we'll let you Nazis uh, get out, but you've got to hand over all the Italians. In other words, any Italian that is a friend of yours is not a friend of ours. So you gotta, you gotta let them go right now. Just, just, just spot them. Well, you know, the sailors, they, they, they wanted to know, hey, how come this, this wrath is coming on us? We don't wanna drown. Uh, and then it was revealed that it was Jonah. All right, give up Jonah. He said to them, he said, look, throw me overboard. You know, give me up and God's wrath will, will skip you and fall on me. Well, the wrath that was coming was coming on El Duce and his mistress. And if they would just give them up, then they could go on. And of course, the Nazis did that because they weren't, they weren't uh, too concerned about Hitler anymore. Hitler only had a couple of days left to live anyway. He was going to commit suicide. So, so uh, what happened? El Duce was put in a farmhouse uh, overnight, and then the next day, when the communists showed up, those partisans, they hauled him and his mistress against a, a wall, and, they, and one guy who became very famous, he took 
the machine gun and, and they were executed summarily. And then their bodies were thrown on a truck and taken back to my land and thrown like garbage in the street. And everybody was coming and spitting on them. And one lady even took a pistol and shot it into uh, uh, El Duce's uh, head several times. This is for what you did to all my sons. And, and they threw garbage on the bodies. And then they, they put a, a, some kind of meat hook on these, these fascists and they strung them up at the police station downtown Milan where everybody could see their bodies hanging upside down. And uh, you see, uh, Mussolini at some point in this journey began to realize that it was better for him to try to run because this wrath was coming for him. The terrible wrath. You have to see that wrath coming in for you, for your children, and for, for, for your whole family, and you have to preach to them. Now, when you get to 1 Samuel, you find this man, Eli. Now, he's a religious man. Oh, man, I mean, he's so religious that when he found out what had happened to the Ark of, of the Covenant, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Holy Ark, the Aron Kodesh, he actually had a heart attack and fell over dead, broke his neck. He was a religious man. He cared about the religious stuff. But he didn't really realize until little Samuel prophesied to him that he was under the wrath of God, just like El Duce. You say, well, why? Well, it tells you very clearly, 1 Samuel 3.13, his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. His sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. Oh, you know, I, my, I, I hope my sons will love me. I mean, I, I have an important position here. Uh, I hope they will emulate me. I don't, wanna, I don't want them to uh, get angry at me. I don't want them to reject me. Uh, so I'm not really going to be uh, real hard on them. Eli was deluded about his children's bedevilment. He was deluded. Notice Eli thought he could see Hannah's sins. Look at 1 Samuel 1.13. Oh yeah, he was quick to point out her sins. Here the poor woman is just praying and she's moving her lips. He thinks she's a sot. He thinks she's a drunk. And, and he, he quickly rebukes her, but he won't rebuke his own sons. He's religious. He's very religious. He sees them as koanim, which they were. So he doesn't want to make waves. And he was quick to criticize this woman, but he took a permissive stance toward his vile fornicating sons. And we have a whole, we have a whole generation of parents right now in the, in the United States. They take a very permissive stance toward Junior. It doesn't matter what Junior does. He can bring anybody up to his room. He can bring drugs in the house. He can uh, do this, he can do that. We're not gonna say anything to Junior. And they're making an Eli mistake, my friend. Uh, they, they don't fear God. They fear their own children. These, these Elmer Gantry church fornicator sons of Eli's, think about it. They really were the offspring of Belial. Hannah was not, but they were. She was not drunk. She'd been weeping before the Lord. She had a great burden. He should have been a, a, a little more observant, a little more uh, uh, knowledgeable, uh, uh, spiritually speaking. And, and, and her weeping, contrite heart, what does it say? The Lord did not despise, Proverbs 51, 17. A contrite heart he will not despise. So he wasn't despising Hannah. But what he was despising were those vile fornicators 
who were bringing blasphemy and reproach on the house of God. And notice Eli was quick to rebuke her, but not the ones God wanted him to rebuke. He wanted him to rebuke his sons. And my friend, I want to tell you something. In the ministry, it has cost me so many times to preach the truth. And I've had so many people walk away from me because they did not want to hear the truth. And there have been times when I felt like it was just going to be me and my Bible and nobody else. And not because I'm this uh, holier than thou person, but because the word of God brings reproach. This is why Jeremiah is weeping. This is why he has no disciples. Uh, the Lord wanted Eli to rebuke his vile sons. It says, do you think he will die if you discipline your child? Proverbs 23, 13. But you see, this was Eli's problem. He closed his eyes to his son's bedevilment. He didn't want to look at it. Let's, let's change the subject. Let's talk about something else. Well, what's Junior doing? Well, he's upstairs with his girlfriend. Oh, well, maybe they're just playing canasta. Let's talk about something else. Uh, what would you like to talk? Let's talk about religion. Wasn't it a wonderful service we had Sunday? And who was that new person that came? Wait a minute. What is your son doing? He's upstairs fornicating. You have Hophni and Phineas upstairs. Have you read 1 Samuel? Do you know what happened to those two? Do you know what happened? Do you know what defeat they brought on the people of God? Do you know how many people had to die? Do you know what happened to Israel as a result? Go back and read the Bible. It wasn't a small thing that they were doing wrong. He closed his eyes to the wrath of God. The gathering storm of the wrath of God. And friend, that gathering storm was against them. But since he would not stand up to them, it, in so doing, it, this gathering storm was against Eli. It was against him. Hallelujah. And, and this is a picture of you and me. First uh, chapter of Romans, verse 18. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven. When I got saved, those tears that I was weeping Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, it wasn't just because I was sad about the, the, the life that I had wrecked and how miserable I had made my wrecked, wicked life. It was because I knew that there was a holy God and his fury was directed at me and I had to do something about it. And religion wasn't going to help me. I had to get really saved. And that meant that the fear of man brings a snare. I could not fear men. I had to fear God and get in line with what he wants at all costs. And this is a picture of you and me. This is a picture of, of, of what happened to Paul on the Damascus Road. As soon as he was confronted and he saw the wrath of God against him, he immediately went into the synagogue. Uh, within a few days, he was preaching in the synagogue and they were getting ready to stone him because you see, the fear of man brings a snare and Eli's sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. First Samuel 3.13, Eli closed his eyes to their bedevilment. I want you to look at the Orthodox Jewish Brit Hadashah. Um, because today I'm speaking about Mishihistim or Mishihist Yidin. Messianists, Jews. That's my topic. On my second birthday, and I'm 76 years old, the Soviet Red Army took control of the Fuhrer bunker, underground complex of the Fuhrer in Berlin. And this was May the 2nd, 1945. On the 29th of April, if you'd been in the Fuhrer bunker, if you went to the bathroom, you'd have to wait in line. Why? Because the doctor and the dog handler were experimenting with the Sinai capsules that Adolf was going to give uh, 
his uh, newly married wife, uh, they wanted to make sure that the pills that Himmler had given them would actually work. So they, uh, the dog handler pried Blondie's, the German Shepherd's mouth open, and they put the Sinai in there and killed the dog instantly. So they were able to report that uh, the pills would work. And of course, the dog handler was very upset. Nobody was that upset about the six million Jews or the hundred million people that had been killed. And if someone had said to the dictator, please, uh, sir, don't do it. Thou shalt not murder. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill your newlywed wife. Lo, dear Tzach, uh, the sixth commandment, don't break it. Our God is a consuming fire. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, remember God gave them up to uncleanness and, and God punished them with fire from heaven. Remember the Horban. Listen, uh, the Horban took place on the same time frame. Uh, the the ninth of Av, the month, the fifth month, to Shabbat Av. Uh, it's called the Horban. When I when I got to Romans uh, chapter nine, verse twenty-two, uh, and I got to this word Apollyon. Uh, I remember uh, I saw it meant destruction. And uh, I decided, okay, I'm going to use the word horban. What if, what if God, it says, endured with great patience objects made ready for horban. Here's the word right here, horban. The, the, the burning wrath of God. You see, Moshiach is our peace. He saved us from the Horban. He took the Horban for us. He said, you, you tear down this temple and th the third day uh, Hashem will raise it up. And he did. And that's why the, the backdrop of this book is the burning Haron of Hashem. Romans 1.18 Romans 2, 8, 3, 5, 4, 15, 5, 9, 9, 22, 12, 19, and 13, 5. And uh, I remember I was in Pittsburgh and I was trying to deal with this guy who was trying to become a believer, but he would not give up hatred. He would not repent. He was just trying to re be religious and change religious labels. And of course, the first person I met after I met him was the police. And it does say in chapter 13, verse five, that the police does not, he does not have his sword in vain. He is an instrument of God's wrath. If you won't listen to the preacher, you're gonna to have to listen to the cop. And this, this idea of, of being saved from the wrath of God, this is, this is fundamental, and uh, it's it's it, even the meaning of the horban has been lost. We walk around in black clothes mourning the horban. Well, what about the wrath of God that was poured out at the horban? And what about escaping from the wrath of God? And what about uh, having real teshuvah in face of that wrath? to uh, flee from that wrath, to get right with God in, in, in lieu of that wrath, in, 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 in light of that wrath. Uh, what about that, friend? Now, I want to show you one of the most important sentences I ever wrote in my life. Although it declares in Acts 21, 20, that Mishihistim, or Yidden, Mishihist Yidden, in Jerusalem are zealous for the Torah. Yes, they are. They're zealous for the Torah. But notice, it does not say that they are zealous to put anyone under law. 
as a set of conditions necessary for redemption. Romans chapter 6, verse 14, we're not under that, because if we were, we would be under wrath, because the Torah brings wrath. Go back and look at all these references that I gave you in Romans, and you will see that. And uh, it says in Acts 15, verses 10 and 11, that we weren't able to bear this yoke. No, we needed a redeemer who could bear it for us. So if presumably the Mishihist Yidden in Jerusalem see Mashiach in every Yod and every Tog of the Torah, of which they are from, or religiously observant, then non-Jews who are not religiously observant would have no argument with them since both groups, the Jews and the non-Jews, believe in Luke chapter 24, verse 27, and Johannine chapter 5, verse 39, which says that Mashiach is in every verse of the Bible. And this, according to Acts 21.20, is the Mishihist Yid. This is what they are. Now, friend, you need to go to AFII.org and you need to look at this. And you need to go to AFII.org forward slash OJBC.PDF and look at these references. Romans 1.18. Romans 2, 8, 3, 5, 4, 15, 5, 9, 9, 22, 12, 19, 13, 4. All of those references. Because, my friend, I know what it feels like to be under the wrath of God, and I don't want to get under his wrath again. I want to repent and keep a short account with the Lord. Because I know that the orgi, the settled anger against sin, the holy orgi of God, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. And I thank God that the Brit Hadashah is Orthodox and it is Jewish. Amen.